here we are, it's the home tie with Kid and Mr Harriers here at the KC Stadium on a day when the Tigers could go top of the third division if Swansea fail to win their clash away at Carlisle United this afternoon. On the team news for the Tigers, it's good news that Jason Price is fit to return, but Ian Ashby has pulled a hamstring and he is out of the starting lineup. A new man on the bench this afternoon is a new signing, Ryan France, joined during the week from Alfreton Town. A player who can play on the right side of midfield or as a winger. He's going to be pushing for a first-team place before the end of the season, according to boss Peter Taylor. The full Hull City side then is Paul Musselwhite in goal. Andy Dawson at three, Justin Whittle at 15, Richard Hines at 28, Damien Delaney is 16, Dean Keats wears the captain's armband at 19, Stuart Green is 14, Jason Price 18, Stuart Elliott wears seven, Danny Olsop is 10, and Ben Burgess is nine on the bench. Fit again, it's goalkeeper Alan Fettis, 29 is Ryan France, 34 Russell Fry, number eight, Jamie Forrester, and 24 is Andy Holt. Well, Kidderminster have made three changes from the side which lost at home to Lincoln last Saturday. Coming into the side is Dean Bennett, John Williams and Graham Ward. Dropping out, Bishop, Henriksen and Gadsby. Kidderminster boss Ian Britton, according to their website yesterday, said that Kidderminster will be coming here to avoid defeat. Which would suggest they're going to be playing for a draw this afternoon. Their lineup then is in goal, Stuart Brock. At two, A.D. Smith, three, Scott Stamps, four, Danny Williams, subject of a transfer inquiry this week, five, Craig Hinton, seven, Dean Bennett, number nine, John Williams, 18, Adam Willis, 20, Graham Ward, 23 is on loan Lloyd Dyer, he's on loan from West Brom, and 24, Robert Betts. On the bench, number six, Matt Gadsby, 11, Sam Shilton. Surprisingly, Bo Henriksen wears 12, he's on the bench with Sean Parrish at 14 and Andrew Bishop at 10. It was Parrish who scored Kidderminster's consolation goal on the last home game at the KC last season when the Tigers crushed Kidderminster by four goals to one. I'm sure the fans would love to see a repeat of that. Our referee this afternoon is Mr Jay Ross from London, the assistant Mr P Simpson and Mr R Tippin. Kidderminster in their red and white outfit, red shirts, white shorts, tucking the goal to our right. The Tigers in their familiar home strip, attacking the goal to our left. Good turnout for what is uh, two home games on the trot. Tuesday night, the big game at home against Swansea. That could be very much a winner takes all for the top place in the league if both sides win today. But first and foremost, the Tigers must defeat Kidderminster to set up that chance. So great expectation. As Ben Burgess and Stuart Green get the game underway. Keats putting it out to that right-hand side, looking for Jason Price, who immediately is in tussle with Scott Stamps, but it's a Kidderminster Harriers throw. Goes down the line looking for Williams, but Hines gets the header, but out into touch for another Kidderminster throw down the line again, and again Richard Hines wins the header. But Jason Price couldn't keep it in play, and so Kidderminster have possession. Craig Hinton's ball forward, finding Danny Williams, but Delaney with the header out. Might well, come towards Elliott, he wins the header, Elliott knocking it forward. Bit of head tennis at the moment, Keats wins the header, finds Olsop. Olsop gets the ball out wide to Price, looking for a quick return pass. Hinton rather put Stamps under some pressure. But he does well, just uh, Stamps. Playing return pass with Lloyd Dyer, who knocks the ball forward for Williams. Williams being partnered by Dean Bennett this afternoon, it would seem, for Kidderminster. A.D. Smith can't quite keep that one in under the uh, pressure from Stuart Elliott. That will be a Hull City throw in, which Andy Dawson has gone across to take. Goes back to Delaney. Long ball forward, heading towards Danny Olsop. Williams leaves that one for Graham Ward. Goes out to Dyer. Dyer, who scored the Kidderminster goal last week in their defeat against Lincoln. And it's Stamps now, the long ball forward, trying to find Bennett. Bennett tussling with Andy Dawson. And uh, Bennett needs a little bit of shuffle. But Dawson. 
makes a tackle and it's gone out of play for a Kidderminster throw. Quickly taken back to A.D. Smith. It's back down the line to Bennett once more. Smith cross into the box. Partial clearance landed into the path of Robert Betts. Uh, season, a signing this season from Rochdale. Robert Betts' goals this season have come for Rochdale in the opening few fixtures of the season. So it's Andy Dawson for City. Long ball forward. Eventually comes to Elliott. Now Stuart Green. Dawson once more. Now Green. Back with Dawson again. Inside to Dean Keats. Ball down the left-hand side. It might come to Danny also. Gets on that mistake by A.D. Smith. Goes down under the challenge from the uh, Kidderminster Central defender. Goal kick. The decision of Mr. Ross, the referee. Just a moment of panic in the Kidderminster defence there as Danny Olsop seemed to have a little bit of space to run into. It was uh, Adam Willis, the captain, who made the firm challenge on Olsop, resulting in this goal kick which Brock knocks to the halfway line. Elliot with a challenge from Dean Bennett, cleared them both and came to Andy Dawson. Elliot battling with Smith. Dawson once more to Keats, now with Elliot. Down the left-hand side, looking for the run of Ben Burgess. The ball had gone out of play. It will be a Kidderminster throw. Small travelling band of Kidderminster fans making themselves heard behind the goal to our left. Considerably less Kidderminster fans here than there was last season. Perhaps only 150 or so behind the goal this afternoon. Hines. Burgess couldn't quite direct his header towards also, but he will eventually come. And also goes down. Quickly taken free kick by Green. Comes to Price. Cross towards a far post. And A.D. Smith takes the safe option and heads that one out for a whole city corner. He had Elliot lurking behind him and didn't want to take any chances. And so Stuart Green has gone across to take this corner. Plenty of men forward as Green clips it in towards the middle, headed out. It's going to come to Kidderminster's number four, Danny Williams, with a good tackle by Dean Keats. And now Justin Whittle has it with Jason Price. Price getting it back towards Whittle. Goes the chance, Burgess! And Burgess has scored! He almost didn't score, but Burgess, not quite enough power, the goalkeeper in the end, carrying the ball over the line, and Burgess gives the Tigers the lead. I'm sure he's going to claim that one. He had an empty net to put the ball into. The cross coming over from that right-hand side. And there he was all by himself, Ben Burgess. And Stuart Brock, he might have been better punching the ball away in the end. He caught it, but carried it behind the line. The assistant referee had a perfect view on that right-hand side and immediately signalled it was a goal. And City are in front with only seven minutes on the clock. And Kidderminster, who haven't won in seven games, are already a goal to nil down here at the KC. Andy Dawson getting it back to Delaney. It could be a rough afternoon for Kidderminster if they don't put themselves into this game quickly. A side definitely lacking in confidence, Kidderminster. And that's not a good start for them. Real hesitation for a moment when Burgess placed that one in this, which is his left foot, and uh, Stuart Brock made the save but carried the ball over the line, or perhaps he only caught it when it was just over the line, whichever. I'm sure Big Ben will claim that one. And the Tigers have the lead. Delaney's skyward ball headed away by Kidderminster's number five, Craig Hinton. Dawson back to Stuart Green. Further back to Damien Delaney, has a bit of space to run into. Williams to the other Williams, John, but he couldn't quite get possession. It was uh, Justin Whittle, uh, of course, involved in that goal. 
getting the cross in in an unfamiliar position for him. Not uh, very often that Justin Whittle can claim an assist. No doubt he'll be delighted with that one. Dawson's ball. Hinton with a miscue, but uh, he does get the ball out of play. It will be a whole city throw. Elliott to Burgess. Back to Elliott again. But it's straight offside. Stuart Elliott, the assistant referee's flag, was up on the right-hand side, and so Kidderman still have a little bit of breathing space. They certainly look a little bit on the shaky side at the moment. They came here for a draw. They've now got to try and claw themselves back into the game. It's a, a blow for the manager when he sets his side out to go for a draw, to go behind so early in the game. Smith's throw. Keats with a header. Burgess, a little flick towards Elliott. Has to battle with Bennett. Bennett wins possession for Kidderminster. Goes across to Lloyd Dyer on the left hand side. Dyer takes on Richard Hines. Hines battling well. Concedes the throw. Cross in from Stamps. But that should be easy for Paul Musselwhite, who gathers comfortably. And then kicks long, looking for Burgess. The ball goes skyward. Burgess wins the header, finds Alsop. Alsop tussling. And eventually, number 24, Robert Betts, knocks it back to his keeper. Brock with the clearance. Only as far as Delaney with a firm header. But Alsop still making his way back. Stamps sucking it forward, and John Williams seemed to be a mile offside. 35 years old now, the ex-Swansea uh, striker. Burgess getting it left to Elliott. It was a strong tackle by A.D. Smith. Elliott managed to uh, jump out of the way. If he hadn't, it could have been uh, a yellow card for the defender. As it is, it's a free kick for City on this left-hand side. Dawson to Green, back to Andy Dawson again. Delaney, cross to Justin Whittle. Delaney once more. Finds Olsop making the run. Header into the box. Clearance by Hinton, finds Williams. Bennett inside to Danny Williams. Neat bit of play by Dean Bennett. Now Danny Williams again. Goes left-hand side to Stamps. He's got Lloyd Dyer on the left wing, but she's just to go through the middle towards Bennett. Neat football from Kidderminster here. Here's Dyer taking on Richard Hines. Just kept that one in, Lloyd Dyer, and in the end, it was a firm cross, but Musselwhite was alert to the danger, and now it's Elliott knocking the ball down the line. It's going to come to Danny Olsop, mistake by A.D. Smith. Burgess, neat play to Elliott, back inside to Olsop. Olsop's got a run on goal. Goes past the defender, still Danny Olsop, but Craig Hinton sticks a foot out and makes a vital interception because Jason Price was running into space on that right-hand side. And Kidderminster to get away with it. Number 24 is Robert Betts, getting it out wide to Dyer. Takes on Hines, takes a deflection off Richard Hines and away for a Kidderminster corner. And at the moment, Lloyd Dyer looks a useful outlet for the Harriers on that left-hand side. Just uh, 21 years old. And uh, just the one goal this season for him. Dyer making that short move across the Midlands from West Brom on loan. So Kidderminster have left uh, just the two defenders back, more or less, as the ball's whipped into the box. Muscle White comes together and does so. But he's got no immediate option. City have pulled everyone back. White, long ball forward. Bird is trying to get the flick on. But Kidderminster come away with it. A.D. Smith looking for the run of Williams. He's not going to find him with that ball, and Delaney heads it away. 
comes to Dean Bennett inside to Williams, but he couldn't get possession. And it comes all the way across to Jason Price, knocks it back to Whittle, who lets Stuart Green take possession. Green switching it to the left hand side to Elliott. Header back to Andy Dawson. Inside to Keats. Keats does well to get the ball, and Green goes past his man, leaves it for Danny Olsop, who goes down under a bit of a challenge there from Craig Hinton, but referee allows play to continue. Lloyd Dyer finding Williams. Back now with Dyer breaking through the middle for Kidderminster. Takes Whittle on, but can't get past him, and Richard Hines knocks the ball out for a Kidderminster throw. City, of course, still without both Alton Thelwell and Mark Joseph. Otherwise, we may have seen Richard Hines in a central position today. Header out by Whittle. City are hopeful that uh, Thelwell will be back in training this week. Delaney's ball to Andy Dawson. Burgess with a flick on. And it's going to go out for a whole city throw in on this left hand side. Elliot will leave this one for Andy Dawson. Burgess trying to find Elliot. Elliot's battling with Smith. Still Elliot and Smith battling, and then Elliot just having a little pull at Smith's shirt and that's a free kick for Kidderminster. Rock coming it forward. Delaney clears for City. Only as far as Betts now stamps. And again it's Dyer the outlet on that left hand side. Jason Price coming back though. Goes inside to Betts again. Danny Williams, Smith, back to Williams, header out by Delaney. Lady Smith's up and under, but the offside flag up against uh, John Williams in the centre for Kidderminster, so that will be a whole city free kick. Forward towards Olsop, couldn't quite win the header. Has a, a long look at Andy Dawson. Wanted it a little bit lower than that, and so Stuart Brock. Been with Kidderminster for six years now, Stuart Brock. Stamps on the left-hand side, leaves it for Dyer. Dyer into the middle. Ward couldn't control it, and City will break with Olsop down the right-hand side. Holds the ball up well, Olsop. Support there from Burgess. Now Jason Price. Price couldn't quite keep possession, and Danny Williams has it for Kidderminster. Bennett. A.D. Smith. Keats to Elliott. Elliott goes down. Firm challenge from Dean Bennett, and the referee will want a word, I think, with uh, Dean Bennett. Just tells him to calm things down. And he wants a longer word with the Kidderminster right-hand side uh, player. Don't think he was too impressed with the Kidderminster player's reaction to the free kick. Formerly with West Brom, Dean Bennett. He's been with Kidderminster for four years now. Ward just signs that one back to Brock in the Kidderminster goal. Header by Williams. Andy Dawson clears firmly, but it will be out for a Kidderminster throw. And a good spell from the Harriers since conceding that goal. They've been retaining possession quite well. Haven't perhaps yet created an opening for their strikers, but some uh, neat approach play from them.
Lady Smith inside to Williams. Elliot puts that one out for another Kidderminster throw. Dyer wins the header, he wins it well, but can only direct it into the arms of Paul Musselwhite, who's quick throw sets Jason Price away, but Dyer's got pace and gets back to close uh, Price down. He leaves it for Richard Hines. And Hines really not quite sure where to put the ball in the end. It goes down the line, and Scott Stamps clears. Hines with a header forward for City. Stamps again, now with Lloyd Dyer. Price tackling back, the referee judges that was unfair and pulls up Price and that's a free kick for Kidderminster just at, uh, outside the uh, centre circle. Just gone a little bit quiet because since they got that, that early goal, we've now been playing for around about uh, 18 minutes. Delaney's header away. Richard Hines, his clearance only goes out for another Kidderminster throw. Bennett's header, but only directed again to Paul Muscle. Why Kidderminster not really posing too much of a threat in attack at the moment? Their approach play just seems to break down once they put the final ball into the box. Craig Hinton puts that one forward. The assistant referee's flag is up, and Peter Taylor is across to the touchline, just trying to G his side up a little bit. And they've all gone a little bit flat since the Tigers grabbed that early goal. Hines clips it forward, but it's a poor pass, and it's an easy header out for Hinton. Stuart Green knocking it forward. Burgess. Can't direct header towards Price, comes back to Richard Hines once more. But he's forced to turn backwards, cuts it across to Delaney, who's got some space to run into here, Delaney. Finds also, but he couldn't get his pass to Burgess, and now it's Dyer for, for the Harriers. Cuts inside, across to Dean Bennett. Price's header goes out for a Kidderminster throw, it's back with... Lloyd Dyer once more. Danny Williams. Recovered well there after initial uh, loose pass and then surely was impeding uh, Dean Keats, but nothing given. Dyer's pass to the left to Stamps inside to Bennett, but Bennett has to go backwards to Lloyd Dyer again. And that's a poor pass because also will pick up the loose ball. But then gets a complete muggle up with Delaney and Williams will score for Hakita, Mr. Harriers. And that was oh so easy for them, a real mix-up in the middle of the park. Danny Olsop with the intervention, flicking the ball back into his own defence. Delaney's clearance was a poor one, straight to John Williams, who hammers the ball home with his left foot into the right-hand corner of the net, and Kidderminster are back on level terms. And to be fair to them, since conceding that early goal, they've been producing all the attacking play and asking all the questions, and eventually, with a little bit of luck, they are back on level terms, and that brings their small band of fans to their feet behind the goal to our left. There's not many of them, but they're making a bit of noise. And I can be sure that Peter Taylor will be less than impressed with that uh, rather comical defending by City, which allowed Kidderminster to get back on level terms. And the Tigers, of course, have only a middle two of Keats and Green. No natural ball winner in the middle of the park this afternoon for City, and that could cause them problems as Kidderminster have been retaining possession very neatly. Price with a rather hopeful long punt forward that uh, really comes to nothing, and that just uh, rather loosely gives possession away. Brock's throw out to Stamps. And Price closing him down, and Stamps has got a few problems here. He has to go backwards. 
And Shepard in the way for a throw to Hull City. Price takes it quickly, finds Green. Green has to lock it back to Richard Hines. Hines clips it into the box towards Olsop. Wins the header, but he's pushing in the back of Craig Hinton, and that's a free kick for Kidderminster. And City perhaps just had a little opening there, but didn't make the most of it. Williams surely tussling with uh, Delaney a little unfairly, but nothing given by the referee. Header out by Keats, comes now to Bennett. Trying to find Ward down the line, and Delaney has to concede the throw to Kidderminster. Bennett with a header back to Ward again. Now it's uh, with Bennett on the right-hand side. Elliot comes to close him down, but Bennett slips, but still keeps possession, and then Elliot forcing it out for a Kidderminster throw. City not really... Uh, Getting their passing together at the moment. Andy Dawson shepherds that one away for a whole city goal kick. Well, Big John Williams will be uh, delighted with that goal. He's not going to outpace too many defenders nowadays. When well, the chance came to him there, rather fortuitously, he made no mistake. And City will press forward here with Richard Hines on that right-hand side with the throw. Inside to Green, back with Hines again. Now Stuart Green. To Burgess, but Burgess sends it all the way back to Delaney. Frustrates the crowd a little bit, Delaney has to... Look it out wide left to Andy Dawson. It's going back to Delaney again. Long ball towards Burgess. Flick on towards Olsop. With a final firm challenge. And uh, in the end, the referee has given a free kick to Kidderminster. And Jason Price in a little bit of a tussle there with the Kidderminster defender. Scott Stamps, he's off with his own version of events. The referee has a little word with Price. Now, the free kick's been taken quite some distance from where Danny Olsop's collision with the Kidder Insta defender took place. And, uh, Jamie Forrester, who's been a subject of one or two inquiries from other clubs regarding loan moves, is doing some warming up with Andy Holt at the moment. Delaney's header out to Burgess. Leaves it for Price, who runs into Henson, goes down. And the referee has decided that uh, Craig Hinton is going to be the first player to be yellow carded. And you might say that Jason Price went down somewhat dramatically because he's now back on his feet. And so uh, there's nothing wrong with him. And it was more like a collision than a deliberate foul by Hinton. I think that's what he's saying to the referee. Arms outstretched there. Hard to say that the player had time to deliberately uh, block Jason Price, but he's earned himself. A yellow card, it's his second yellow card of the season. So City have a free kick just inside the Kidderminster half. To the edge of the box, Burgess wins the header towards Whittle, almost came to Olsop. Cleared only as far as Keats, back now with Burgess. Retains possession, gets it to Andy Dawson. Has to go back to Delaney. Delaney's ball forward, easily cleared by Hinton. Delaney again. Dawson. Nice pass to Burgess, goes inside to Stuart Green. He finds Olsot, he can get the ball out wide right, he couldn't. And Kidderminster clear the ball away. Now John Williams. Ward. Goes back to Stamps. The ball would have been out to the right-hand side to Jason Price there, had City retained possession. And Andy Dawson has it now, goes back to Delaney. Burgess holds it up. Delaney's ball, holds up time, just run perfectly. Well, that's a very, very late flag from the assistant referee as Olsop took possession, the flag wasn't raised. 
as he turned to get away from the defender it was and that certainly not pleased the fans in the east stand who were giving the linesman some stick you might say and another offside decision this time against Kidderminster results in the whole city free kick he's still getting some stick across that on that side the linesman with the uh, yellow flag Hines to Burgess wins the flick on he can't find Olsop and Scott Stamps clears straight to Richard Hines headed out by Stamps Williams might come to Lloyd Dye but Whittle's alert to the danger and gets that ball back to Paul Musselwhite Russell White's ball forward. Headed by Burgess, might find Olsop, but cleared away by Adam Willis. A vital interception by him. He's got to come back towards Burgess. Wins the header, gets Jason Price moving on that right hand side. He's got Ward in close attention. Needs some support, Jason Price. Has to go back to Stuart Green. Green gets it across to Damien Delaney. Andy Dawson. Elliott's faced by two players, but gets it inside to Olsop. Back now with Stuart Green. Asking a lot of Richard Hines, he does well. Elliott wins the header. A.D. Smith being closed down by Olsop, but he clears long into the city half. Delaney with a header out, concedes the throw to the Harriers. And I think of the two managers at the moment, it'll be Ian Britton that's uh, the happier of the two. Side showing plenty of character and coming back from that uh, early Hull City goal. Lady Smith's throw, and that's a free kick for the foul on Williams by Dean Keats. And so Kidderminster have a dead ball situation midway inside the Hull City half. Not in uh, any great hurry. Graham Ward. Certainly a lot of preparation over this free kick. Into the box he goes, away by Burgess. Danny Williams first of the ball that showed a bit too much to Jason Price, but he couldn't take advantage and Kidderminster have a throw in. The way over on the east stand side as Stamps. The obvious target there was Dyer, not closed down by City, and it comes now to Danny Williams. Clip ball in towards the other Williams, John, but cleared by Whittle. That's only as far as Stamps once more. Hines with a header out this time, only as far as Lloyd Dyer. A.D. Smith might have shown a little bit too much to Elliott, just gets away with it. But his pass was a weak one, and it goes out for a whole city throw and a chance for the Tigers to uh, rebuild from the back. Dawson finds Delaney. Again, looks for the long ball towards Olsop. Olsop wins the header again, but there's no player making a run behind him. Tamely ran through to Brock, and Stamps makes a big mistake, and it comes to Jason Price. Leaves it for Burgess. Finds Olsop, takes the ball down well, goes to the first time shot, was a poor one, and now Kidderminster break away, and the Tigers players arguing with themselves, but Kidderminster can take advantage. Firm tackle by Whittle, but it comes to John Williams. He has far too much time to pick his spot, finds A.D. Smith. He goes into the middle to 24, Robert Betts. Haven't seen too much of him recently. Now it's with Dyer once again. That's a neat run by Ward, but Muscle White has to get there, and he does. Dawson leaving it for Delaney. Thirteen minutes remaining in this first half. Only Dawson's ball forward. Again, it comes to Olsop. Burgess bringing it back towards Olsop, coming a break through here. Olsop trying to get the ball to Jason Price. Goes down in the box. 
appeal from the fans for a penalty, nothing from the player. Comes to Hines. He puts it back into Burgess. Holt is still offside and is slow getting back onside. Williams gets it out to Dyer. Dyer spots the run of Dean Bennett behind Delaney. Delaney just wins enough on that ball and Dawson gets the header out to Elliott. Elliott with the clearance. Headed back by Willis and Delaney with a header forward for City. Betts finds uh, A.D. Smith. And Danny Williams. Now Dean Bennett going forward. There's a cross goal, that's a good pass. Because there's Lloyd Dyer in too much space. Gets the cross in and there's Bennett making the move. And put his header just wide and really Dean Bennett should surely have hit the target from there. It was a lovely move, the ball going across the left-hand side, there was Lloyd Dyer. Dyer picking his cross, inch perfect for Dean Bennett's return run. But Bennett with a really weak header, when he should have planted it in the corner of the net, he rather feebly put it wide, he'll be kicking himself for that, and that could so easily have been 2-1 to the Harriers, and probably should have been. Here's Jason Price, and really a long-range effort from him, and rather tamely gives possession back to Kidderminster. And again, Peter Taylor is onto the touchline. Getting instructions out to his players as the ball forward again. Delaney leaves that one for Paul Musselwhite. He gets it out to Hines, immediately under pressure from Ward. Justin Whittle. Head of flick on by Burgess, but only as far as Stamps. Lady Smith side to Betts. Plenty of space for Stamps to move into. Switches play to the right-hand side, looking for Dean Bennett. Finds him. A.D. Smith. Delaney and Whittle battling away at the back, and Justin Whittle for to concede a throw-in for Kidderminster, and once again it's the Harriers who are stringing the passes together. It's a big home crowd today. They're going to be, I think, a little bit disappointed so far with what they've seen. Bennett's throw finds John Williams. Elliott with a clearance. It goes out of play. The referee says it was just midway in the city half when it went out. A.D. Smith then with the throw. Danny Williams, Ward, back to Smith again. Header out by Delaney, only as far as Ward, switching it into Betts. Now Danny Williams goes for long-range effort, but curls it wide. Quite by some quite distance, it went wide of the post. And plenty of instructions coming from the touchline for City. Could be a major half-time rethink. The Tigers are just not getting enough possession and then they're not really retaining it at the moment. And that's another weak ball from Dean Keats, easily cleared. Keats again, overhead kick. Only as far as Williams. Back is back with Dean Keats, finds Burgess. Turns well, Burgess. Leaves it for Green. Green turns. But he's forced out of it and Dean Bennett picks it up for Kidderminster. And this is where City are losing possession all the time in the middle of the park. A.D. Smith switching it back inside to Bennett, who's had a good game in the first half, Dean Bennett. Should have scored that chance, but uh, he's played well so far. And Danny Williams, the playmaker for Kidderminster, gets the ball past Ben Burgess. Clips it out wide to the impressive Lloyd Dyer. He's got Stamps on the overlap if he wants to use him. He does, and it's far too easy for Stamps. Acres of space, back to Ward. But Ward's pass just finds its way to Dyer. Clips his shot in. Muscle White makes the save, but under no pressure from any oncoming forwards. Goes to the edge of his area, kicks it long to Olsop. Couldn't retain possession again. And again, City concede another throw. Eight minutes remaining in this first half. The fans trying to lift the team. Delaney's clearance, 
resulting in another Kidderminster throw. Ben Burgess, the only man left forward by a city. Long throw into the box, Muscleway gathers comfortably and then he sets Elliot away down this left-hand side. Can Elliot use his pace to get away from Bennett? He can't. Excellent defending by Bennett and then Aidy Smith takes a, a lucky ricochet and brings the ball forward. Switching it inside to Williams. He clips it across, acres of space again for Stamps. Jason Price has been pulled into the middle. Inside to Betts, but he shows too much of it to Ben Burgess. It's going to come back now to Price. Trying to find Burgess, it's a bit of a miscontrolled pass. And eventually, it's a kid in to throw. The Tigers don't really have uh, a central midfield option on the bench. Um, the obvious player perhaps would have been Stevie Melton, but he's not on the bench today. The youngsters uh, Ryan France and Russell Fry are both on there. And Richard Hines really caught uh, in two minds, eventually has to hammer it out into touch. And so Kidderminster have another throw. It's really been the away side doing most of the pressing. But having said that, for all their neat approach, what they've not created many chances. And that's uh, an example of where their moves tend to break down, the final ball into the box. Only once have they really opened City up when Dean Bennett ghosted in for a free header. Their goal, of course, culminating from a defensive mix-up between Olsop and Delaney. It's the Muscle White's clearance, head on by Burgess. They just can't quite get it uh, happening in the attacks. They get plenty of flick ons this afternoon. So the ball goes out of play for a kid Minster throw into the last five minutes or so of this first half. Here's Williams for Kidderminster. Whittle chesting it to Delaney. Clearance will find Burgess. Missed time his header, and so it comes to Betts. And it's a bit of a weak pass from him, put uh, Stamps under some pressure, but he did well to find Lloyd Dyer, who turns. And Dyer gets it back to Stamps. First time ball into the box. Delaney with a header out. Helped forward by Dean Keats. Hinton, though, first of the ball, finds Dyer. And Dyer will take on Richard Hines. He's got the pace to worry Richard Hines a little bit, but Hines does well. But he does concede another throw in for Kidderminster Harriers. Referee wants the throw taken from the correct position. Hit around by Justin Whittle. Clip back in by Betts, but it runs harmlessly through to Paul Musselwhite, who feeds it out to Andy Dawson. Dawson inside to Dean Keats. Burgess. And that's a poor pass from him straight to Dean Bennett, who nips it inside to Danny Williams. Leaves it for Robert Betts. Dyer gives it away to Price, but he can't control it, comes back to Betts. Bit of a melee in the middle, and eventually the referee gives hold through the free kick. Price getting it out to Richard Hines, but not too many options for him going forward. Has to go back. Hines wants him to run down the right-hand side. It never came for him, and now it's Delaney bringing it forward in the middle. Looking for the run of Olsop. He's going to have to make a lot of ground here, Danny Olsop. He did make a lot of ground and wins a free kick for a push in the back. And uh, more evidence that Kidderminster will try and run the clock down as they dispute the decision. It was Craig Hinton who uh, did the push in the back. Referee sends A.D. Smith back. And so Stuart Green will take the free kick. The Tigers pushing plenty of men forward. Kicks it into a far post. 
Whittle's there. It's a good save by Brock going down to his left. Kieran Minster will be concerned as to just how easily the Tigers open them up there from that free kick. And the Tigers do carry an aerial threat. Stuart Green falls over, just gets it back to Whittle, who clips it forward, but rather aimlessly, and it runs through to Brock. Brock clears long into the city half. Delaney with a header, Whittle with another, and Price getting it back to Hines. Ball goes forward towards Burgess. A miscue in the end, the ricochet, it comes back to Stuart Elliott, and here's Elliott taking on Smith, but he can't get past him. If he had, he had to have acres of space on the left-hand side. But here's Williams breaking for Kidderminster. Goes back to Bennett, he rather gives it away cheaply to King Keats, and then commits the foul on Keats, which will bring about a whole city free kick. Deep in their own half, they're going to leave it for Paul Musselwhite as we move into the last two minutes of normal time. I can't imagine there'll be much more than a minute or so of uh, time to be added on, so coming towards the last chance for the Tigers perhaps to get themselves back in front. Might come through to Olsop, still might come through to him. A.D. Smith having to clear out for a whole city throw in. Andy Dawson finds Elliott. Back to Dawson, clips in his left foot towards Burgess. Might come to Olsop, he does, and Olsop has scored! It's 2-1 the Tigers! It all came from a super pass into the box by Andy Dawson. The ball knocked down for Danny Olsop. And he hammered it home into the left-hand corner, right on the edge of half-time. It's 2-1 to Hull City. It's goal number six for Danny Olsop. And from that sort of range, the, the Australian is undoubtedly lethal. And that brings the home fans to their feet after a... Half an hour or so of attacking play by the away side. It's the home side that are back in front. And so, just 30 seconds of normal time, City will want to make sure they play out these final 90 seconds or so and ensure they go at half time to go in front. Should be a real bonus because their first half play didn't really deserve them to be two goals to one ahead, but hey, who cares? The Tigers are in front. All of a sudden, a little bit more urgency about Kidderminster with their throw-ins. Hinton giving it across to Stamps. Undoubtedly, though, Harriers will still pose a threat going forward. Robert Betts finds Williams, and the Tigers have got to close them down, and they give away a needless free kick. Stuart Green with a foul on Danny Williams. We're into time added on. And Kidderminster have a free kick quite a distance outside the box the referee wants to take it from exactly the right place which is pretty important it's around about uh, 30 yards or so from the goal the City have been guilty of giving away lots of uh, needless free kicks in and around the box previously it's going to be a long-range effort from Williams. It clears the wall, but no real uh, power or direction on it in the end. It scuffs its way past the left-hand post, and that could well be the last uh, action of this first half. And Stuart Green's got a little bit of a habit of giving away free kicks in dangerous or awkward positions. The referee, Mr Ross, wants Paul Musselwhite to... Uh, be a little bit quicker. Muscle White with the kick. Finds Burgess. So it was Big Ben Burgess who gave City the lead. John Williams equalised for Kidderminster. And it's Danny Olsop who has put the Tigers back in front. As we approach the half-time interval, here's Burgess bearing down on Stuart Brock, who has to clear long into the City half. And Williams had judged to have fouled. Justin Whittle, and that will be a free kick for City, and this will probably be the last action of the first half.
Andy Dawson's ball forward. Almost found his way to Jason Price, but it comes to Lloyd Dyer. I'm not quite sure what we're uh, playing time added on for. I don't recall the train has been on the pitch in the first half. As Dean Bennett has possession on the right-hand side, feeds it back to A.D. Smith. Williams curls it into the box, looking for John Williams, but Jason Price is there. And there is the half-time whistle. And so the Tigers go in at half-time, two goals to one ahead. Not their best first-half performance. Got off to a great start when Ben Burgess scored the early goal. Olsop got the second. Williams replied for Kidderminster at half-time, then it's Hull City 2, Kidderminster Harriers 1. So, second half about to get underway. No changes for either side at half time. Kidderminster will get the game started, playing from right to left in this second half. And there are two goals to one behind, of course. We'll see if the Tigers uh, reshape themselves for this second half, or if we just change their tactics a little bit to combat the packed uh, Kidderminster midfield. I'm sure Peter Taylor wanted to get the ball out wide to Elliott and Price just a little bit more. As Hines clips the ball down the line. And at half-time, uh, with Swansea losing at Carlisle, this afternoon the Tigers could go top of Division 3. Swansea will have to score twice at least to uh, prevent that from happening. Elliott with a header forward. Willis gets it back to Brock. Clears to the halfway line. Delaney heads it back. Hinton. Delaney heading it forward once again. Now comes to Stamps. Trying to find Williams. It will run through to Paul Musselwhite, who gathers comfortably. And just rolls it out to Damien Delaney. Andy Dawson over on that left-hand side. Green. Delaney again, knocking it forward towards Burgess. Flick on, trying to get Olsop through the middle. Olsop battling with uh, Stamps, who does well to get the ball out of play for a whole city throw in. Price back to Richard Hines. Hines curls it into the area. Elliott was making their run, but it's headed away. And then Dyer knocks it out. Only as far as Hines again. Now Jason Price. Price, across with his left foot towards Elliott. Elliott goes down, back to the header towards Burgess, going for the dramatic left foot shot, but swung and missed. And uh, Stamps it is, who brings it forward for Kidderminster, locking it away to Dean Bennett on that right-hand side. Bennett taking on Andy Dawson, finds Danny Williams. Whittle with the clearance. Elliott, looking it forward, but Hinton's there to clear for Kidderminster, now A.D. Smith, Dean Bennett once more, Dawson and goes out for a Kidderminster throw. And uh, collision between Elliott and Bennett results in a Kidderminster free kick. Both players went down holding uh, their legs. Elliott's back on his feet and Bennett gets to his feet and so Kidderminster have a free kick in a fairly dangerous position, they can certainly whip it in from there. The Tigers have pulled everybody back into defence. Kidderminster don't have the uh, height advantage at all, only Williams is really tall and Whittle will head away quite comfortably. Elliot can't keep it in, so it's a Kidderminster throw. Goes back to Danny Williams. Curled into the box. The assistant referee's flag was up for offside. And the referee pulls the play back. So it was a moving ball 
As Muscle White cleared, we'll start again. Delaney. Andy Dawson's ball forward. Couldn't quite find Burgess, it sails over his head. As Holsop and the referee collided on the 18 yard area. And Lloyd Dyer leaves that one for Betts. Nice pass from him, finds Ward, knocks it back to Scott Stamps. Dyer. And Dyer retaining possession and rather cheaply gives it away to Richard Hines and now it's with Stuart Green who sends it away to the left-hand side to Andy Dawson. Elliott clips it away down the left but there was no one there for City and A.D. Smith can clear for Kidderminster. Dawson looking it forward towards Olsop. And Olsop getting away from Hinton, still Danny Olsop. Still battling with Greg Hinton, surely have been held back, and this is still Alsop. And in the end, Alsop scored, but the referee judges that he had fouled Craig Hinton. It looked pretty much 50 50 from here, but to be fair to the referee, he did have a better view of things. The booze ringing around the stadium, the fans not in agreement. Keats now for City goes down with a foul from John Williams. Takes it quickly, for Jason Price, who wasn't quite with it, but he gets the possession, finds Burgess. Four towards Olsop. Olsop going through with Willis, but Willis clears. And that's surely a back pass, was it not, from uh, Adam Willis? Certainly knocked it backwards. The referee not awarding a free kick, though. Craig Hinton bringing it out of defence. And you always feel that Olsop has the pace to cause defenders so many problems in and around the penalty area. It's heading his way once again, and this time it's Olsop who gets the free kick. Robert Betts rather skied that one away. It's uh, not an awful lot of use to his side, because of course they trailed 2-1. And in the end, what was a free kick for City is uh, overruled because the assistant referee's flag is up for offside. So it'll be Craig Hinton to take the free kick. Hinton looking to find Williams, who wins the header. Jason Price clears for City. Stamps putting it forward, only as far as Hines. He finds Ben Burgess. Puts it back to Hines, who knocks it down the line. Olsop will give chase. Hinton can take no chances, puts it into touch. Jason Price is there for the quick throw, goes down the line to Alsop. Battling with Hinton again, just clips it into the middle. But uh, not firmly enough to find Burgess and Stuart Brock picks up the ball. Weak clearance from him, straight to Richard Hines, who sends it forward, but Alsop was still running back on side. And Stamps nods it back to his keeper. Brock's clearance, Whittle with a header forward. Dyer goes inside to Betts. Richard Hines picks up possession for City and he will put it into touch for a kid in throw. Stamps finds Ward. Betts goes across to A.D. Smith. Here's Andy Dawson. Out for a whole city throw in. As Dawson was looking to bring the ball away, takes the throw in quickly. But Ben Burgess couldn't direct the return pass. He's looking to try and get Elliott away down the left hand side. Couldn't do so. Lady Smith with a throw in. Header on by Williams, cleared by Damian Delaney. Flick on by Burgess, but it goes out of play for a Kidderminster throw.
Hinton sends it forward. Comes to Craig Ward. And, uh, good tackle by Dean Keats. Gets it away. Now Elliot. Elliot getting all softened. Again, it's a fairly late flag from the assistant referee, which uh, upsets the home fans. Really, as soon as Olsop went for the ball, the flag was raised. The kid of Minster are playing with five. They're going to let Danny Olsop get as close to that because eventually he will be onside. And he doesn't miss too many one on ones. Dyer finds Betts. Gets past Burgess, but he's going to have to go quite deep to do so, Betts. Then he gets away out to the right-hand side to A.D. Smith. Elliot is there trying to close him down. And it's a corner for Kidderminster. City have pulled everyone back to in and around the box. Sonny Stewart Green is outside the whole City penalty area. Kidderminster putting most players forward, and it goes into the box, Elliot with a header away. Green will try and get there for City, he does, clears long, but out for the Kidderminster throw. Well, Kidderminster have got plenty of options on the bench, forward-wise, Bo Henriksen and uh, on loan Andrew Bishop, the two men, but it was Scott Stamps there who goes it in on the left-hand side, which forced Jason Price to concede the corner kick. Graham Ward then will take the corner. In it goes. Muscle White will collect. Well, far too easily for Kidderminster's liking, I suspect, but he had no options uh, for the quick clearance. Eventually, he kicks it along. Stuart Elliott is away on that left hand side. He might find him. In the end, AD Smith gets a header in and does well. The Kidderminster defender clears into the city half where Damien Delaney collects the ball for the Tigers. Delaney knocking it forward towards Burgess. Might come to Green. Now Burgess turns. Still Ben Burgess, still going forward. Shot through the legs, comes to Jason Price. And Scott Stamps with a vital interception to put the ball out for a whole city throw in. A little bit of magic there from Ben Burgess, almost created the opening for the Tigers. Price with a throw to Hines. But it's a weak cross, but only we've partially headed away. Elliot gets it now to Andy Dawson. Goes for the shot. And what a goal from Andy Dawson! What an absolute cracker of a goal! It's the top right-hand corner of the net. It's Hull City 3, Kidderminster Harriers 1. And Andy Dawson loves the spectacular goal. He curled one in against South End into the top right-hand corner, and this afternoon, it's a left foot volley into the same right hand corner. And another piece of magic from Andy Dawson. And that has got the fans on their feet. And that will be a contender for one of the goals of the season, undoubtedly from Andy Dawson. Right at the end of September, you'll struggle to see a better strike than that. And now real pressure on Kidderminster, who for all their neat approach work, approach work, you just don't see them having a player who can produce a shot like that. And indeed, the immediate response of Kidderminster is to warm up Bo Henriksen, the Danish striker. And really, uh, in terms of uh, strikers, they haven't posed too much of a threat, Kidderminster. Their approach work constantly breaks down with the ball into the box. And so Ian Britton has some real thinking to do if he can stop this run of seven games without a win becoming eight. And so 32 minutes left on the clock. Hull City 3-1 to the good. Still plenty of time for Kidderminster to get themselves back in the game, but they're going to have to create some chances to do so. And they have
haven't really done so in the second half as yet. Danny Williams finds Bennett on that right-hand side, clips it into the middle. But once again, Russell White can claim easily. Has to do so, getting past his own defenders, gives Justin Whittle a bit of a knock in the process. Richard Hines just knocks it back to Paul Musselwhite. Click on by Alsop. Runs through to Brock. Well, Peter Taylor, one of the fans, to really get behind the side this afternoon. A little bit quiet in the first half when Kidderminster were playing some neat football, but they're certainly making some noise now. Rock with a clearance for the Harriers, only as far as Stuart Green. Andy Dawson. And Delaney with the long ball forward, but perhaps rather snatched at it and hit it too long in the end, and Kidderminster have possession back. Nady Smith's long ball was one of his poorest of the match. It runs through harmlessly to Paul Musselwhite. Goal kick into the Harriers' half. I wonder if uh, Peter Taylor will give Jason Price a rest towards the end of this uh, game. Price will be desperate to face one of his former clubs on Tuesday in Swansea, of course. Born in uh, Pontypridd. This is uh, Price's first game back after missing the two away trips to Orient and Rochdale. Justin Whittle's clearance. Might find Elliot. It's the head of forward, but Burgess will have to chase hard. Willis does well for Kidderminster to get it across to A.D. Smith, who uh, buys a bit of time for himself, needed a bit of play by A.D. Smith there, appreciated by the fans on the East Stand. Betts with a head of forward. Delaney allows that one to run through, Whittle covers, and a bit of pressure from John Williams gets it back to Paul Musselwhite. And Musselwhite concedes the throw. Just for a moment there, there were two footballs on the pitch at the same time. Referee, not quite sure what he's going to uh, to give here. Could be a drop ball, perhaps, or... Yep, going to restart with a drop ball. And Elliot recognises that Kidderminster did have possession of sorts, and so uh, knocks it back to Brock in the Kidderminster goal. Delaney gave the ball away and then stuck out a leg which brought down Graham Ward and so Kidderminster have a free kick in a fairly dangerous position. You remember there one from the first half which I'm afraid was pretty poor. Danny Williams' scuffed shot went tamely past the post. He's got a chance to do a bit better but it's a very similar sort of area and it's Betts in the end who tries his luck. Quickly taken but hopelessly uh, over the bar. And if you're going to go for goal from there you've really got to hit the target. Uh, a crowd this afternoon of 13,600 here at the KC. Up a bit on previous games. And if City were to go top this afternoon, you can be sure there'll be a huge gain on Tuesday night for the Swansea tie. Next Saturday, of course, City go to Northampton. Before then facing Carlisle here during Hull Fair Week. So Andy Dawson scorer of that super goal now with Green back to Dawson who leaves it for Damien Delaney to knock it long. Olsot makes the run. Willis with a header. Elliot wins it back for City but couldn't quite control it. Forward by Delaney. Bets to Danny Williams. Stamps. And Hinton hits it long to Dean Bennett. 
who's been a lot quieter in this second half compared to the first. Danny Williams leads it back to A.D. Smith, and all of a sudden, Kidderminster don't have as many options. Williams heads it back to Dean Bennett. Ward makes the run forward. Bennett comes inside, finds Betts, has to knock it back to Danny Williams. Thought about the shot, but goes out wide right to A.D. Smith, who puts it into the air, and that's where Kidderminster's attacks continue to fall down. The aimless ball into the box, easily taken by Paul Musselwhite. And while their approach work is good up to that point, the final ball just doesn't really cause enough problems for the Tigers. They do have possession back again, and they build so well, Kidderminster. Hinton asking a lot of John Williams. And Hines defends well for City and clears towards Ben Burgess, who wins the header, guides it back to Price, who's inside to Green, couldn't control it, but it's going to come back to Ben Burgess. He gets Danny Olsop away, Olsop takes it on his leg. Appeal for handball by Hinton, but uh, nothing was given. Now Jason Price for City. He's rather caught in two minds, and Scott Stamps wins it back for Kidderminster, finds Lloyd Dyer. Dyer finds Stamps. Ward. Goes to uh, Danny Williams, clips it away to that right-hand side to Bennett, challenges with Andy Dawson, and wins a throw-in for the Harriers. Williams again. Lady Smith's in an advanced position for him. Leaves it back for Danny Williams. Now Betts, Price with a vital challenge, and City clear. Danny Olsop will give chase. Kidderminster means to deal with that one comfortably, and now it's with Stamps. To Lloyd Dyer. Back with Stamps once more. Dyer. Betts. Good ball from him. Finds Bennett on that right-hand side again. Bennett hugging that touchline in this second half. Danny Williams. Looking for the run from Ward. Ward tries to turn. Alert defending by Delaney. And uh, eventually the final ball there from Kidderminster is a weak one. And it's got to the point where surely Kidderminster have got to consider making a substitution. They're just not offering anything in attack. They build up nicely, but uh, they're just not making the openings in the box. And they do have the ever-dangerous Henriksen uh, looking rather a forlorn figure warming up. Ian Britton makes the shout to Bo Henriksen to make his entrance into the game shortly. This afternoon's attendance, So midway through this second half, the Tigers with a two-goal cushion, but we saw against South End how things can dramatically change. Delaney with a header out. As South End had uh, Bramble on the bench, who came on and caused so many problems. Kidderminster then have Henriksen, who knows where the goal is. So nothing lost yet for Harriers. They could still get themselves back into the game, but they need to do something pretty quickly. Here's Lloyd Dyer trying to get forward for them. But Whittle is alert to the danger and clears out for a Kidderminster throw. Stamps. Header out by Delaney, finds Elliott. Elliott trying a little bit slowly to get that clearance away. And now John Williams has it for Kidderminster. Gets his cross in, takes a deflection off Andy Dawson, and it will be a Kidderminster throw in. And Henriksen puts on the number 12 shirt. And City are also going to make a substitution, it would seem. Steve Butler, the Hull City coach, having a word with the fourth official. Andy Holtz, the man who's doing the warming up at the moment, as Price gets that clearance away, and a chance for Green. Can Green get there before Hinton? He can. He goes Stuart Green through the middle. He's got Olsop in support, Stuart Green. 
goes for a rather measured shot, but in the end, perhaps that wasn't the best option. <laughs> Looking at Peter Taylor on the touchline, he looks rather incredulously across at Stuart Green that he tried to shoot from there. And I don't think the whole city boss thought that was the best decision by his midfielder. Didn't perhaps in the end have the pace to really get away, and uh, Andy Holt will be making an appearance for Hull City shortly. But first and foremost, we're going to see Bo Henriksen coming on for Kidderminster, wearing number 12. Just a question of who comes off. It's uh, number 24, Robert Betts, the midfielder. So Kidderminster are going to push another man forward. Henriksen signed for Kidderminster, of course, by Jan Molby from Herr Fogler in Denmark some years ago. Andy Holtz will be into action shortly for City. Henriksen goes straight into the middle alongside Williams. Header out then by Hinton. Ward, so rather skies that one. Price going it for the City and finds Olsop. Header back comes to Price. Eventually, Danny Williams has it for Kidderminster as well. But it's green alert to the danger, and then Keats finds Elliott. Elliott breaking down the left-hand side. Tries to get across him, blocked by Smith, backing by Elliott again. Headed by Hinton, it was a vital one, and if the direction wasn't that great, it did snuff out the danger. And Dyer couldn't get away. Good tackle by Price. Hines for City. Oh, lovely play by Richard Hines. Finds Olsop, also trying to get the return pass. In the end, finds Price. Price trying to get Hines away. It comes now to Danny Williams in the centre for Kidderminster. Has to go backwards to Willis. And City also warming up pair Ryan France, the new signing. Dyer with a cross, which goes into the midriff of Richard Hines and out for a Kidderminster corner. It's the last 20 minutes of the game. into the box. Look at Musselwhite gather and once again it's all too easy for Paul Musselwhite and that's nowhere. No real threat from Kidderminster from any set pieces this afternoon you have to say and Musselwhite's come and gathered cleanly every time. Credit to him for that but no real challenge on him. And so Andy Holt will come on in place of Stuart Elliott who's battled gamefully down the left but hasn't perhaps uh, caused too many problems this afternoon. For Kidderminster, and Andy Holt will had had a bit more defensive uh, steel on the left-hand side. Elliot didn't have the pace to get past A.D. Smith this afternoon. He hasn't really had the opportunity to cut inside, but he'll be needed on Tuesday night for that game against Swansea. And so Andy Holt, who's come on a few times on the city left in recent games, goes into the left-hand side of midfield as Muscle White clears stamps Dyer stamps again the acrobatics and Hines puts it out for a kid in Minster throw Dyer's throw into the area cleared by Whittle it comes to Ulsol Burgess nice pass from him Dean Keats picks the ball up gets it back to Burgess tried to thread it through Williams' legs didn't do so battles with Dyer unfairly says the referee and uh, it's actually a whole city free kick is given everybody seemed to assume the foul was by uh, Ben Burgess the whole city players all ran back into defensive areas but in actual fact it was uh, pushing or pulling by Lloyd Dyer and so it's a free kick for Hull City and City have caused Kidderminster problems from set pieces that's the big difference between the two sides Green's ball into the box headed away Dean Bennett picks it up. Williams. Now Ward. Nice pass from him. Finds Dyer with some space on his left hand side. Justin Whittle. And uh, a judge that wasn't a deliberate back pass, rather a miscued clearance, which ran back to Paul Musselwhite. Having said that, you've seen some referees give those as back passes. It's a bit of an unknown situation sometimes. Uh, young Ryan France will shortly be introduced 
by Peter Taylor. Could be that Jason Flight is feeling a bit tired at this stage of the game. It will be quite an introduction for the young man coming in from Alfreton during the week. Been studying at a university, a sports science degree with mathematics, so he's certainly no slouch in the education department. In his early 20s, has been courted by uh, Sheffield United prior to the Tigers and also Ipswich Town had been expressing an interest that he had to move quickly to bring him in and he may well get his chance although Jamie Forrester is also doing some warming up and would be another option to come on if Price is a bit tight yet having a quick word with his uh, right-sided player maybe just checking how fit he feels and he's going to get on the end of that return pass from Danny Olsop who puts his uh, hand up to acknowledge the pass the stamps hammering it forward header out by Delaney Green battling in the middle with Ward but Ward gets the ball forward for Kidderminster Whittle finds Price couldn't quite get past Stamps who gets it out into touch for a throw in into the last 15 minutes if Kidderminster are going to change and turn this game around they have to do so pretty soon. They don't look like doing so. Here's Burgess breaking into the middle. It's a lovely ball, but the flag is up against Andy Holt. It's a super pass from Ben Burgess, who enjoys playing against Kidderminster. He got a hat-trick against them last season. And he certainly had a good game this afternoon. And here is Ryan France, and I suspect it will be Jason Price that will be making way for the youngster. Referee wants a word with Brock. And indeed, Jason Price is coming off. They'll have to save him for Tuesday night. And a real chance for young Ryan France to impress for a quarter of an hour. Gets a very warm welcome from the home fans. And Price, of course, very popular, getting a good reception as he comes off the field Whittle with a header out Burgess the lovely header finds France his first touch for the youngster breaking forward retains possession puts it back to Burgess who knocks it out to Stuart Green he's got Richard Hines in support with him but Green's got a bit of space to move into goes down the line to France France takes on stamps there's a lovely cross and Stuart Brock had to come and collect and he did the Tigers are breaking forward again. Here's Dean Keats going for goal. Spotted Brock off his line. He was a little bit optimistic he was going to score from there. Brock's clearance. France with a header forward. On all stop trying to get past Hinson. The back pass coolly dealt with by Brock, gets it out to Scott Stamps. His ball looking for John Williams, and really it's all going wrong for Kidderminster, but can Lloyd Dyer produce a spark? No, he falls over, and the referee judges that that's either a, a throw-in or a free kick. I think it's going to be a throw-in. It was clearly Kidderminster's throw. Dyer is somewhat unimpressed the ball actually went out off Ryan France but clearly from where the referee was he didn't see that and so Hull City have the throw Hines down to Burgess Ward turns for Kidderminster but he loses out and Burgess wins it back for City and can he get also up away still Ben Burgess oh dear he made the room for himself Burgess had the uh, courage to go for goal but just got underneath the ball and skied it over the bar, but he did well to uh, make space for himself and advance on goal. The uh, pass to Olsop was never going to be easy from where he was, so he went for went for goal, and uh, in the end, it didn't quite come off for him. Here's Olsop again, though, trying to find Burgess this time. Williams knocking it back. Andy Holt in an advanced position. It's going to come forward for Burgess again. Wins the header, couldn't quite direct it to Olsop. As Hinton clears, Williams can't make it stick, and the Tigers have it back with Ryan France. Nice ball to Olsop. Holds it up. 
back to Stuart Green and City are now controlling this match completely. Green to Burgess, that's a good pass from Burgess, finds France. Can he control it? He can, he's got to take on Scott Stamps. Gets across into Alsop. But his header rather tamely goes wide and credit to young Ryan France, he's come on and he's not frightened to take a man on or put a cross into danger areas. Different type of player to Jason Price, he's looking more for the ball into the box. Different build, of course, altogether to the Welshman. Whittle's header forward. Lady Smith gets it inside to Danny Williams. And once again, the attack just peters out for Kidderminster, and you feel really somewhat surprised that they haven't made more than one change, Kidderminster, since they put on Bo Henrys and he's not had a pass of any note to work with. They really have uh, fallen apart as an attacking outfit in the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes, and it's City who are asking the questions. It's a long ball for towards Burgess, he directs it inside to Alsop, but Stamps was alert to it, Williams helps it forward. Green trying to get past Ward, battles with Bennett. It's going to come to Andy Dawson, make some space for himself, has to turn, does so, gets it forward, great play from Dawson, finds Burgess, holds it up, gets it back to Dean Keats. Now back to Andy Dawson, and really it's Hull City just controlling this game as they want to at the moment. Kidderminster have lost a lot of heart. Burgess rather sells Keats short, but he gets there, and that's the difference at the moment. And here's Andy Holt breaking forward. Also going to the near post, couldn't quite get there, and Hinton didn't get a shout and puts it behind for a corner, didn't really need to. And that just sums up the mess that Kidderminster are in at the moment. And there's really nothing coming from their touchline to change things around. The fans are very, very quiet behind the goal. And at the moment, it's just a question of really when the Tigers out of fourth, rather than if, the way the game's going, City have this corner. It's clipped in. Comes to Burgess, can he turn? Oh, hey, hey. oh! Fantastic goal from Burgess! Absolutely magnificent! It's 4-1 to Hull City. It's annihilation time for Kidderminster. It's his second goal of the game. He loves playing against the Kidderminster Harriers, does Ben Burgess. It's now 4-1 to City. We're in the last eight minutes of the game, but the way Kidderminster are playing at the moment, you can see the Tigers notching more goals because they have completely fallen apart. And Jamie Forrester will shortly be entering the fray. And the way things are, he'll fancy getting on a score sheet the way uh, Kidderminster are playing at the minute. Stamps his pass as a loose one. Hines gets it forward, but it's out of touch for a Kidderminster throw. That's got the fans on their feet again. Well, a lovely bit of magic from Ben Burgess. But surely you have to say he was allowed far too much time to juggle the ball and set himself up for the overhead kick. Surely a defender has got to get a challenge in those positions. They didn't do so. The execution was magnificent. But if I was Ian Britton, I'd be asking some severe questions of my defenders as to what on earth they were doing. And at 4-1 down, they have a chance. The Tigers are going to take Danny Olsop off. It's a standing ovation from the West Stand, and indeed the most areas of the ground. And so Jamie Forrester comes into the fray. Olsop scored that cracking goal, and perhaps the most important goal, the second one, just before half-time. Stamps with a throw into the box. Out by Keats, and here's Ryan France breaking forward. Forrest is making a run into the middle, still France has to check back and have the pace to get away from Dyer, but he's kept possession now into Forrester, but it's cleared only as far as Keats, finds Andy Holt, Holt's got Dawson on the overlap, but Holt's going forward, trying to get Burgess through, he's on a hat-trick, it's Burgess. Now it's uh, Dawson back to Holt, back into the box, it's France! Oh, what a goal! And Ryan France! 
Hearts makes it 5-1. And the Tigers are going goal crazy against Kidderminster. And it's annihilation time for the Harriers. They have absolutely fallen apart. And Ian Britton is animated on the touchline, having a go at the fourth official. I can't think why. The Kidderminster need to look at themselves. They've lost heart, they've lost their professionalism. They're playing like a side who are completely and utterly beaten. And they have allowed the Tigers to pick them off at will. And for their travelling fans, it's a disaster making that long journey from the West Midlands to see their side really just fall apart in this second half. But credit to Hull City. When the chances come their way, they have taken them and how they have taken them. And young Ryan Francis having an inspired game as a sub. And you wonder if there's any more goals and with five minutes left. It's 5-1. The ball goes forward to Forrester. He's by himself. And Stamps, who has been one of Kidderminster's best players, gets it forward. He has one of the players who hasn't given up this afternoon. Whittle goes down, but he's OK. He's on his back onto his knees. It takes a lot to upset Justin Whittle. Referee checks with him. He's OK. Well, Ryan France will be absolutely delighted this afternoon to have got that goal. He's had an impressive appearance. And I'm sure he'll want a video of the occasion. Hines knocking it forward. Andy Holt. Andy Holt's done well as a sub as well, and Andy Holt's been pulled back all the way, but he's still going. He couldn't quite get it through, but he's picked it up. Well played, Andy Holt. He didn't give up, he kept going. Real determination. Now Stuart Green. And Forrester couldn't quite get on the end of that Stuart Green pass. It was a neat ball from Green, it just didn't quite fall into Forrester's path. Brock clears for Kidderminster. Here's Williams. Williams puts it out. So, just over three minutes remaining. The Tigers on course then. Well, in fact, they have indeed got their biggest win of the season, exceeding the 4-1 home thrashing of Darlington. And here's Forrester looking busy, getting it back to Keats. Good pass from him, finds France. Hines into Stuart Green. Forrester, City just bossing this game completely. Green now to Richard Hines. Lovely pass inside to Forrester, turns well, gets it to Burgess, he's still on a hat-trick, Ben Burgess. Keats getting it out wide left to, to uh, Andy Dawson. Dawson to Holt. And Andy Smith gets a foot in to prevent Holt from getting the return pass to Dawson. He's going to leave the throw to the left back. Forrester. And then Kidderminster can break. Dean Bennett's gone down, but he's uh, back on his feet now. Well, it's consolation time for Kidderminster if they can get the ball forward. They haven't done so for such a long time. Here's Danny Williams looking to provide a bit of inspiration. Finds, well, he almost found Graham Ward, but I have to say, I've not seen Bo Henriksen hardly touch the ball since he came on as a sub, and he's the only sub that Kidderminster have used. And uh, to be fair, he just hasn't had a kick. Andy Holt winning the header, finds Forrester. Battling with Willis. Forrester retains possession, turns, gets a cross in towards Burgess. Oh, he was waiting for that one. A vital, vital header from Hinton. Because Burgess was ready to pounce. And good tackling back by uh, Ryan France. And Kidderminster have a throw with Stamps, back to Hinton. Williams is always available for the ball. He just can't uh, get his team going in this second half. 
Lady Smith. Header out by Delaney. Comes to Dean Bennett, who had a tremendous first half, but hasn't been seen much in the second. It's a neat little ball forward. But once again, Paul Musselwhite, who's had a pretty safe pair of hands this afternoon, was alert to the danger. He's done everything asked of him, Paul Musselwhite. Had no chance with the goal that could have been to score. That's a long clearance from him. Header out by Willis. A little nudge from Andy Holt, which uh, is uh, ignored by the referee. It's been a, a fair shoulder barge, presumably. Andy Dawson taking his time, throws it into Burgess. Back to Dawson. Goes inside to Jamie Forrester. He's looking for some support, but he retains possession ex excellently well and wins a free kick. And the Tigers will put Kidderminster under further pressure because at set pieces, Kidderminster have really struggled this afternoon to defend. And the fans are urging City on to get a sixth. Haven't got too many men in the box. It's clipped in towards Burgess. Couldn't quite get it on target. He won the header. Just over the bar. As we uh, just about up on the 90 minute mark. Rock's clearance. There will be three minutes of added time. Three minutes for Kidderminster to get a consolation or for the Tigers to make it six. We shall see. He is Ward. Looking for Lloyd Dyer. Ball in, but headed away by Whittle as far as Williams. Gets it back to Dyer. Sorry, rather, it's uh, Scott Stamps, I should say. But it's a weak cross from him and Andy Holt with a header out. But again, it comes to Danny Williams. Threading it through. Bennett with a shot, but uh, France gets there and takes a firm challenge from Stamps, who acknowledges the... Uh, foul and indeed he's going to be perhaps a little unfortunately so late in the game to be the second Kidderminster player to be yellow carded this afternoon bit of uh, frustration for Scott Stamps you feel and so City have a free kick in their own half which Damien Delaney is going to leave for Paul Musselwhite well 5-1 home win would surely produce a Big crowd on Tuesday night for that top of the table clash with the Welshman from Swansea. And I'm sure the fans who have been here today can't wait till Tuesday night as John Williams has a shot on the volley. But uh, didn't really trouble Paul Musselwide and France gets it back to Hines. Forrester. Nice little pass to Stuart Green. He's got Ward chasing back after him, Stuart Green, but he's still got possession. Turns. Lays it back to Richard Hines. Green. Burgess to Ryan France. And Green couldn't quite get there, but Hines can. Forward it goes, but Lloyd Dyer picks up the loose ball for Kidderminster in time added on. Bennett finds Dyer. I'm sure Peter Taylor will want the Tigers to make sure they don't concede any late goals. Goal difference could still play a part this season. And the 5-1 home win is an excellent uh, improvement to Hull City's goal difference. Well, it's going to be a rousing and rapturous applause from the fans at the end of this match. City really turning, the second, you know, turning it round in the second half, completely dominating proceedings. And here's Green. Breaking away on that left-hand side, but he's got Andy Holt in support. Holt making the run forward, but Green cuts inside. He's got Jamie Forrester on the right-hand side. Gets it away out to Forrester. Forrester got a one-on-one -on -one situation with the defender. Gets into the box, Forrester. And indeed, handball against Danny Williams. And so City have a free kick in a good position for that man, Andy Dawson, who is making his way across. He'll fancy his chances from here. It could well be the last action of the game. But there's a bit of expectation in the ground now when Andy Dawson steps up for a free kick. You would think he might try and bend it into that left-hand corner as we look at it from the west stand here. 
And I think from this position, the likes of Stuart Green and Dinkies aren't going to get a look in. And they're not quite sure what Scott Stamps is hoping to achieve. He'll have to be careful, having just recently been yellow card. You know. Well, what, what is he thinking of? He's nowhere near 10 yards back. He still isn't 10 yards back. He's going to have to be careful. Green keeps it's green. Oh, fantastic goal from Stuart Green. And you have to say that that was superb. Absolutely magnificent. Everyone was expecting Andy Dawson to take it. It was Dean Keats who just set it off for Green. And Green clips it into the top left-hand corner. Absolutely tremendous. And it's Hull City 6, Kidderminster 1. And Martin gets it right at the second attempt. It was Stuart Green. Elliot left the field a while ago. And that's the final whistle. What an afternoon at the KC Stadium. It finishes Hull City 6, Kidderminster Harriers 1. Absolutely tremendous second half from the Tigers. Kidderminster fell apart and the Tigers routed them completely. And it's got the fans on their feet. It's a standing ovation for City as they leave the field. Kidderminster thank their small band of travelling fans that they have been humiliated in this second half. They had no answer to the Tigers and their attacking force. And the Tigers take the applause of their fans. And it's all set up for a Tuesday night bonanza against Swansea for that big top of the table clash. It finishes Hull City 6, Kidderminster 1.